Hi, uh, welcome to How to Draw a Cute Cartoon Kitten Using Reference, Part 3. Uh, so far, we've uh, covered uh, drawing, simplifying your drawing into flat graphic shapes and designing uh, cartoony shapes on top of said graphic shapes using our little uh, kitten here. Today, I'm going to tackle... Uh, solidity and trying to solidify uh, this drawing. Hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on The Simpsons television show. I've been working on the show for over 20 years now. And uh, I'm going to be talking again about solidity here. Now this is what I'm going to be talking about specifically. At this point we can add solidity. Uh, using books, surprising, uh, a book like How to Draw Animals gives you formulas you can use to add solidity to a drawing. Okay, so I am not going to go over drawing animals in this video. I mean, this is an enormous, an enormous topic. It is huge. And, and like figure drawing, it takes a lot of time and practice to do this over and over. So I thought I'd point you to some books that will actually help uh, give you formulas uh, to start using for drawing solid animals and constructing solid animals and learning animal anatomy, etc. So the first book I'm going to talk about here is this one. How to Draw Animals, Famous Artist School, Step-by-Step -step Method. The, an affiliate link will be in the description of this video. Now this, um, I would like to show you what's inside this book, but unfortunately uh, Amazon doesn't really show you a whole lot of what's inside the book. It, um, yeah, not a lot. <sighs> Needless to say, I'm recommending this book because it has by far one of the best breakdowns of animal deconstruction you can have. It really breaks it down into the most simple compound shapes you can, uh, you can have. Uh, what are compound shapes? I will talk to you about compound shapes in a second. But first, let me uh, just highly recommend this book. Um, I mean, you could buy a use for three dollars. <laughs> so, uh, it, it, but it's it's amazing. This is the these books are one of the best books on drawing animals you can have. The next uh, animal drawing book that I recommend is this one, The Art of Animal Drawing, Construction, Analysis, and Caricature. All right, by Ken Holgren. This is a bit of a classic. Pretty much everybody that I know uh, who's a professional artist tends to have this book. This book um, is much more thorough than the Famous Artist book. However, uh, it's not as simple as the Famous Artist book, um, and that's okay. After the Famous Artist book, you could go to this one and start adding more to your knowledge, especially because of this kind of stuff with the anatomy and how the skeleton works. Do you see how this all this stuff is going on here? Very, very handy. Very good information. Highly recommend this book. And it has this caricature thing where you um, are given tips on making cartoony versions of animals. See? Anatomy. So the reason I bring this up is because if we're going to construct a finalized version of our little kitten, ideally we would like to know what the blazes we are doing. Okay? Um, the thing is when we're drawing this kind of flat graphic shapes, this could only take us so far. Flat graphic shapes do not inform us what's going on in be, behind, inside all this fur. Okay, This is a problem because 
we can copy all the exterior shapes and graphics all we want, but it's not going to make us a better imaginative artist, a well-informed artist, an artist with a solid foundation in what we're drawing. Um, and you can tell when somebody doesn't know what they're doing because the anatomy is all over the place. It's floating around. All the pieces don't connect. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a misinformed drawing. So you need books like the ones that I showed that give you the interior knowledge, the knowledge of understanding what you're drawing. It's not enough just to see and copy the shapes. It's not enough to modify the shapes. You also, in the end, when you're fi doing a final drawing, you want to also understand where what's going on, okay? Uh, it needs to be an informed drawing. It's kind of like uh, a, a little kid who um, knows how to make words but doesn't know how to write a proper sentence or a paragraph. Uh, all the grammar's all over the place. The spelling is off. The sentences don't quite make sense. There's no cohesive understanding there. Yeah, there's a little bit more to it. So drawing is like that too. There's a little bit more to it. What's going on? How, how do these body parts fit together, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So this graphic idea can only take you so far. You eventually have to, in order to understand what you're drawing, and better yet, to uh, feel more comfortable drawing from your imagination. And this is a this is the this is uh, the disconnect between people who like to copy a lot um, and can't draw from their imagination, and people who could do both. That can they can copy and draw from the imagination. The reason why the people who can draw from their imagination can draw from their imagination and and uh, aren't stuck on only being able to draw what they see is because. They've bothered to study the interior workings of the things that they see. They understand them. All right. So let's get to it. How do we make something like this more solid? Well, according to the famous artist book on drawing animals, it's actually very simple. So I'm going to use that book and that reference and that information from that book to solidify this little kitten and make it a solid drawing. Because I couldn't find any copies uh, of the pages that I'm going to need online, I ended up taking some quick pictures of the pages from the book that I'm going to be using. So here they are. I just took these on my phone got the cat heads and we've got the cat constructions see how see what I'm saying here how it's really like broken down into shapes here so this is going to help us flesh out what we're doing with the kitten it's very very handy so so we've got this cat head and that's going to help us so let's just move this over here so we can see let's break it see the breakdown we don't really need the final drawing we just need the breakdown this simple head sort of thing especially this this is exactly what we're doing so all right let's start let's get started with at least a kitten head here now um, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip this the, the step that I'm going to recommend when you get this book I would recommend taking this breakdown and actually drawing it on top of the actual kitten reference that you've got, the cat reference, just to break it down, just to see what they're talking about. Um, if you're not going to do it digitally, you can take the photo and you can take some tracing paper and do exactly the same thing. This is, this is absolutely like the way you really study this sort of thing is uh, you, you take this kind of construction and then you put it on top of your actual reference just so that you could actually see how it actually works in the real world or in, in practical when you're actually using practical art. Okay, let's get to this. 
I'm going to skip that step, although I really ought to have done it myself. Thing. Now, I'm doing a cartoon kitten. The question is, how, so, uh, how naturalistic do I really want this to be? Uh, it's a cartoon kitten, so I don't know. Maybe I don't want it to be that naturalistic. At this point, I don't know where I'm headed. I don't know exactly how I'm going to want this kitten to turn out. And you know what? That's okay. It's part of the experimentation. Allow yourself to experiment. The final drawing is not set in stone. This is something that a lot of beginning artists have problems with. They assume that somehow whatever they put down has to be the final thing and there's no way that you'll ever change it, etc., etc. It's okay to be rough. It's okay to draw over and over and over. Draw it over and over until you get it. Multiple pieces of paper. I, I tend to draw digitally a little bit more often now because of, uh, of that sort of thing. Because I keep drawing over and over and over. When I didn't draw digitally before, I used a ton of paper in my light box. And I would draw over and over on paper, on top of paper, on top of paper until I got what I wanted. So here I am, not knowing exactly what I'm going to do. And, uh, and it's time to experiment. It's time to just see what happens so here I go okay starting with the very basic shape that I've got here and seeing how this is going see this in here you get to see how there's a plane here and a plane here this is where the ears are gonna go okay so let's mark the ear line so that's what I'm doing here. I'm marking this ear line here. This center line is the direction the, f the character is facing. This is the centermost area of the head. Now we've got this eye line that crosses the tear dot and the corner of the eye. Tear dot, corner of the eye. Tear dot, corner of the eye. Tear dot, corner of the eye. Um, in a cartoon character, i got to decide whether or not I want to have that kind of anatomy let's say I do let's just pretend I'm gonna do that so I'm gonna cross the line right across here and assume that there's a tear dot here corner of the eye tear dot here corner of the eye and I'm gonna draw the eyes but my eyes are not the same as a kitten's eyes my eyes are very exaggerated because uh, it's a cartoon. In fact, maybe the tear dot, I mean the corner of the eye, is up here instead. And I've decided that even though the tear dot starts here, the corner of the eye is in fact up here. And I do this because I've drawn lots of eyes. I've drawn a lot of eyes in the past. And having practiced drawing eyes, I could start messing around with stuff. And again, I don't know if this is going to turn out okay. This is just my experiment. And I'm reshaping the eye as I go to see what I like. And it seems like I like it to be a little straighter on the top like a diamond it's a sideways diamond okay this muzzle here the nose comes over here so this is basically a little cup 
just imagine you're drawing a cup. Now, if you follow, this is a, it's, it's, a, it's in fact a cylinder. Now, if you, if, if you follow my uh, drawing website, you're going to see that uh, when draw, that I um, recommend drawing forms. And by forms, I mean, so I, I recommend you, you start drawing spheres. You get good at drawing spheres and cylinders and cubes and wedges. So why? Because, for example, here, look, this is a cylinder and this is a sphere. And these you can consider they are modified wedges. Oh, and uh, before I forget, let me just quickly, I, I talked about uh, compound forms earlier that I was going to talk about them. Um, in the drawingwebsite.com, uh, in level one, under level one, there's making your cartoons look professional, uh, uh, cartooning design uh, lesson. And in that lesson, I talk about compound forms. And compound forms is essentially uh, combining simple, more, uh, straightforward forms like the box and the and the spheres and the wedges uh, etc uh, and the cylinders and uh, making complex uh, when when you when you combine them you can make compound forms uh, which are much more uh, complex versions of forms which you can create more complicated more uh, three-dimensional uh, characters with. All right. Okay, back to the drawing here. So there is a method to my madness when it comes to drawing my drawing lessons. I am, in fact, teaching you everything you need to know to create this sort of thing, this sort of uh, basically to be able to draw anything. So then we got this little thing thing going here. And I don't even know if I want that. Because I'm this is looking at this this is turning out to be much more naturalistic than I even wanted it to. But I'm drawing the solid shapes now. And then I'll mess around with it and change them around after I've got them down. Ah, uh, the eyes. Okay. Now for the body. The body seems to be a lot trickier and more complicated than the head. So let's take a look. Let's first, let's take a look at this, this one here. Let's talk, it really breaks it down into cylinders and cubes, spheres, and more cylinders here and this these are kind of complex looking boxes this is kind of like these are actually like for example here the shoulder blades that's a wedge and then it becomes and it's connected to a um, cube a modified cube Okay, let's take a look at the other one. Okay, again, oh, so it's not quite a wedge because it goes inside. This sphere connects to this sphere here. I see. Uh-huh. This is a good one to, like, leave so that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to put it here. Now, oh, I can't see my reference. There we go. So 
So here we are looking at this as our model sheet of sorts, our construction. And we're going to see how this little guy follows that kind of construction. Now there's two ways we could do that. We can, in fact, kind of draw the draw the construction above this so that we can see it. And he's like a little version of this cat up here. He's a, it's a like a fat version. It's like a fat version of this cat. Am I even breaking this down right? Let me see. Pow, pow. I believe so. Same here. Cylinder. I'm doing a rough job here, not being perfect, but I'm just trying to give myself some kind of guide, something to see how the solidity works. Okay, so I, I'm thinking that it's something like that. Having done this, now I can go over to my my own drawing of a kitty and taking that into account, seeing what's going on here, I could attempt to break down the shapes. Also, okay. And that book is very handy. Now the the this this would be different, obviously, because now ours is much more exaggerated, because we have a cartoon character version. Um, we want this to be fatter than even the our reference. Okay, so what we have here is a little bit more of a solid drawing of our kitten. Okay, so that's what we've got. And from this point on, we can start refining and refining and refining. But we got it looks like a robot, like a robot kitten. But what we've actually got here is the foundations of our construction. We are seeing him a little bit more solid. This is the 
front here okay so um, this is where I'm going to stop this video in the next video I'm going to show you how to finish we're going to be talking about fur uh, modifying uh, doing all the final preparations for changing our drawing to be some kind of modified version of our, our um, reference but right now now that we've seen uh, the book and it's helped us come up with some kind of solid foundation to create to 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 make this uh, kitty cat so that it could be a lot more solid and grounded in three-dimensional space um, we can now go in and start modifying uh, softening things up so he doesn't look like a robot it doesn't look stiff and made out of wood we want him to be like soft and, and, and so that's the next step now that we've got this solid foundation what do we do how do we make it soft how do we finish up the drawing and that's what we're going to be talking about in the next video if you like this video um, I highly encourage you to become uh, my patron over at patreon.com um, it really helps me out and encourages me to do more and more videos and to be better at it and get better at it and the also if you have questions um, my patrons get uh, first dibs uh, high, highest priority I answer their questions first and uh, also the videos that I make go to my patrons first um, they usually get videos weeks if not months in advance so they see the videos long before they are even on the YouTube channel I do answer questions from uh, regular just watchers who are not patrons so feel free to ask questions just don't expect me to answer those right away because my patrons have dibs um, you can support me and get dibs by just donating a dollar a dollar a month and then once in that's all, that's all and then you're a patron and uh, you get all the privileges of uh, all the videos and uh, many other things so Thank you so much, and I will see you next time. All right, bye.